Hey everyone, this is a review of the Dremel Go powered screwdriver. Dremel sent this over for me to review, so we're going to take a look at performance, uh, what I think about it, and then use cases where this excels uh, in pros and cons against this versus a drill. Here's the screwdriver and everything that comes with it. It's the unit itself. It's got seven different bits, including a Phillips 1 and 2, a 5mm hex, a Robertson 2, a, just a slotted 6, uh, T20 and T25 for Torx. So it's got a good assortment of basic bits that come with it. Uh, these are all one inch bits though. Uh, so the end of this is kind of stubby. So if you have a deep reach that you have to get with this, you're not gonna be able to do it. You have to get an extension. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind with the basic bit set. If you've got a recessed fastener, you'll need a longer bit. So you can just buy a regular bit set for 10 to $20 and that will get you through. All right, for a quick overview of this, you've got the on off switch. This is forward. This is locked and then it's reversed. Uh, if you push on the front of this, it will actuate and start screwing. Uh, and when you release, it will stop. Uh, your charging port's back here along with the torque adjustment dial. You've got a USB gauge. When you actuate it, you can see it lights up. I wish it stayed lit for a little bit longer so you can see what percentage of your battery is left. It's got a nice rubberized grip. Uh, that keeps you from marking up any surfaces you're using this on. Also lets you hold onto it really well. This has an integral battery in it. Uh, I kind of wish it was a removable battery, but for 40 bucks, I, I don't think you can really ask for, you know, all the bells and whistles. Um, so it's a uh, 3.6 volt. That means it's one probably 18650 cell in it. And it's 5.4 watt hours. And at that voltage, that means it's a one and a half amp hour battery. The charger that comes with it is a five volt, one amp charger. Uh, so that means it's gonna take at least an hour and a half to two hours to charge this battery if you counter in, uh, count in losses. Uh, so that's not too bad. Uh, it's a pretty decent recharge rate. Uh, if you have a 2.1 amp charger, I haven't timed it with that. I've used it with one, but I haven't timed how long it takes. It might go a little bit faster. The bit holder takes any quarter inch hex bit just pop it right in. It's got a little magnetized spot on it. I do wish this was a locking bit holder though. Uh, I've had, even with Phillips, which doesn't really grab onto the fasteners that easily, I've had these pop out. Um, this is actually powerful enough to use with some small drill bits. Uh, however, you're, you better bring along your pliers because the drill bit gets stuck in the wood every time. It's got a drive control setting so you can limit the maximum amount of torque you're using. Uh, the max torque this has is 44 inch pounds, which is actually quite a bit for this little driver. Uh, it's enough that if you aren't holding it tightly and you push and you get to a spot that, that's really hitting resistance, it'll twist out of your hand if you're not holding it uh, tightly enough. So it's about the maximum amount of torque you want with something that's only this diameter because the larger diameter you're gripping, usually the easier it is to control torque. Uh, that's why you can control more with a drill because you've got a handle sticking way off. Uh, so anyway, for the, the drive control on this, it's got a little dial. One is the lowest torque setting uh, and six is the highest. And I, I did a test on this. This is a one and five eighths inch drywall screw into pine and you can see torque setting one through six. Uh, it's sticking way out on these two. You get to three, it's, it's just bumping up a little bit and same with four is a little bit lower. Five is flush and six is a little bit sub flush. Uh, I did the same test with a Bosch drill, which is the same parent company. There's a 12 volt drill. It's got 20 clutch position settings uh, and one and two were the same. And then nine was roughly to three and then 15, 16 and 17 for four, five and six. Once I got to 18 and beyond, it was driving the screw way into the wood and wasn't really comparable. I was kind of surprised the torque on the first two settings were one to one. It was the same exact height when using the drill. I was hoping this would have a little bit more finesse than the drill because it seems like with stuff like hinge screws and, and stuff that's a little bit more delicate, I was hoping for a little bit more uh, of a lower setting for the lowest torque on this, especially since this doesn't have variable speed. Once you push, it's the same speed the whole time. And so it can get a little bit tricky with, with small fasteners and you might actually want to lock this in place in the center setting and use it as a regular screwdriver for those, uh, at least when you get close to being tight all the way on them. One really nice feature about this that you can't do with the drill is you can hold it like this and keep your screw on the bit uh, with one finger, especially if you have a small fastener that's really handy. You just line it up and make sure I'm in forward and not reverse uh, and pop the screw in. It's got 360 RPM. Uh, that's a pretty controllable speed. It is not variable speed. Uh, 360 RPM is roughly equivalent to speed one on most 
handheld drills. And we can pop it in reverse and take that right back out. And if you want to tighten something by hand, uh, you don't have to go get a separate screwdriver. You can just put this in uh, its middle position and go ahead and use it by hand. So if you run out of batteries, you can do that. Or if you want uh, some really precise control, I was using this with flat pack furniture and you, for the cam lock fasteners that you only turn like a half turn, I didn't want to use this in powered mode and it worked great in uh, the middle position as a regular screwdriver. All right, and just to prove it can handle a fairly big drill bit, this is a 5 16 inch bit. Uh, that's pretty hefty. We're gonna see if it can drill through a two by four. All the way through, you could tell it was working really hard when I was doing that, uh, but it managed to do it. Now the problem is, this bit is now stuck in here because this doesn't have a locking bit collar. And if I hit reverse, it's not gonna come with me. There we go. See, it always comes out, and I managed to get this one out. So it's possible to drill holes with this, not ideal, uh, because when you drill it, especially with bigger drill bits, it always pops out uh, of the hex holder. Now, if I want to be a little bit nicer to this and use a 1 16th in inch bit, you can see it handles it a lot better. However, it still leaves it in the wood. So if you're thinking about buying this, you might be looking at it between a cordless drill and this cordless screwdriver. Uh, and there are some pros and cons to both of them. This is incredibly lightweight. It's only 9.6 ounces, uh, as opposed to most drills are two pounds or more. Uh, this also, it can fit in a pocket. It can fit in a tool bag very easily. Uh, you can keep it in your, you know, your kitchen junk drawer so it's accessible all the time. It's the first thing you can grab. Uh, so I really like the portability, ease of use. Uh, you can also use this as a regular screwdriver. So it was excellent for flat pack furniture. It might be the best tool for that kind of job because you've got those cam lock fasteners that you only want to turn half a turn. And normally you have to use a drill and a screwdriver, uh, but in this case, it's just a screwdriver. I think it is more controllable than a drill. Uh, when you push on it, it's not gonna cam out because you're already pushing on that screw. Um, so it's, you're less likely to get misaligned with a drill. You're not pushing directly on that screw. You're pushing on the handle and kind of cantilevering your, your, your force. Cons against this thing, it's not as fast as a drill will be, and it doesn't have as much torque as a drill will have. Um, it doesn't, also it doesn't have a battery that's removable, uh, so if you run out of battery, you can't pop a new one in and charge the old one. You're just gonna have to stop using it or use it manual mode. Battery life was pretty decent though. It lasted 130 fasteners in that flat pack furniture project I said I did earlier, and that's like 3 eighths of an inch fasteners all the way up to quarter inch diameter screws. Uh, so little drawer slide ones and then big structural bolts that hold the whole thing together. Uh, so it had a pretty good life at 130. It was just, it was down to one bar and I was, it was starting to feel a little bit sluggish. Uh, so it was probably just about out of batteries. Uh, that's a pretty decent run. It was about two and a half to three hours I was putting that thing together. Um, so this will get you through most projects that are little projects. If you're going all day with it, you're going to run out of batteries though. So I think this would be an excellent complement to an 18 volt drill. You got something small and lightweight uh, and then a bigger powerful tool. I think if you're looking at a 12 volt drill though, you've got a little bit tougher of a decision uh, between either getting this or the 12 volt drill, depending on how much you plan on using it. Also, if you're drilling a bunch of holes uh, with drill bits, this isn't the best solution just because you don't have that locking bit holder and the bits are always gonna come out of it. But for screw driving, uh, this has been an awesome, awesome little tool that I've been using over the past few uh, days, uh, and I'm really impressed with its capabilities. Price point on this is $40. Uh, that comes with the driver itself, seven different bits, and a USB charging cable for the integral battery. So you've got everything you need to get up and running uh, with this for 40 bucks. Um, I think that's a pretty decent price for the capabilities this thing has uh, and the features they've built into it. Uh, you just need to keep in mind whether you need that or an actual drill if you don't have one. So a Bosch powered screwdriver uh, that's the same parent company as Dremel. Um, this isn't the base model, but their base model runs $80 to $100 depending if you catch it on sale. That comes with a charger, two removable batteries so you can keep going even when run runs out and it will have a much higher maximum torque and maximum speed than the Dremel does. However, it's, you know, two and a half, two to two and a half times the price. So 
Based on this review, you should know what you need, uh, depending on your use case, um, to make the decision between the two of these. So let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below, and once again, don't forget to subscribe.